Hey everyone, Dan Johnston here. I'm the Jack Fall Ministries, here to help you make it happen. And today I'm going to talk to you about using Flex Seal as an alternative grout for doing tile work in your camper. Before we hop too deep into this video, I want to mention that this was just an idea that I had using Flex Seal as an alternative to grout. It hasn't gone through extensive testing. I don't have multiple installations under my belt. I haven't tested this in wet areas or the difference in, uh, you know, grout sizes. I haven't tested it on different types of tile or different types of substrate. So really, there's a lot of things that could still be tested to where I could find out that, hey, this is not a very good idea. However, so far in my application, I'm very happy happy with it. Really love the way it turned out. And I'm hoping that by sharing this video with you guys, uh, some of your creativity would be able to take my idea and run with it and come up with even better ideas. So with that being said, if you're watching this video, you're probably where I was not too long ago. Uh, we kind of ran into an issue where we're trying to figure out how we're going to put tile in our camper. Um, and we knew the design we wanted and we could find like the, the cheap alternative peel and stick version of it, but we just didn't like the way that that looked. I mean, I feel like peel and stick tile, you can just always tell that it's peel and stick tile. Um, but at the same time, you know, I was really hesitant to use actual real tile in our camper because, you know, all the vibration and the flexing and stuff like that, um, over time I was afraid it was going to crack the grout. So I had to come up with an alternative, um, or risk cracking. So... I came up with an idea. I started asking, is there such thing as flexible grout? And I did some research and typed in flexible grout. And, and the best I could find is it seems like LVT grout was flexible um, because sometimes you can buy that, you know, peel and stick LVT and then you can kind of, um, you know, grout it. And that is supposed to be flexible. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe that's the right solution. Um, but I had my doubts. And even as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know what? I wonder about Flex Seal. And so I decided that I was going to do an experiment. I was going to take the LVT, I was going to get some real grout, and then I was going to get some Flex Seal and use that as grout in some real tile and test it out and see what the flexibility was on each of those products and see if any of them made sense to use in our camper. So I want to start off by talking about the experiment that I did. If you just want a DIY explanation of how to do this, you can go ahead and for, uh, fast forward to a different chapter uh, and you can get right down to the install process. But if you're curious about everything I tried, especially if you're going to try to tweak some things on your own, uh, I'll go ahead and fill you in on how I did that. And so my wife and I, we went to Lowe's, we found the tile that we wanted to use in our camper. So I went ahead and bought some and cut it into some sample sizes uh, that I was going to use to, you know, test it out. So the first thing I did was I took my little sample piece and then I built kind of a dam around it uh, and taped it off so that I could just pour the flex seal into it and it would kind of flow and self-level. I figured, you know, I've done a lot of work with epoxy countertops and stuff and I thought, you know, if I pour flex seal, it'll just self-level into the, the grout lines uh, and it'll be perfect, but it did not move at all. It's too viscous. Um, there's really no flow. I ended up kind of moving it around and pouring it into the cracks just to, you know, I was just kind of playing with it to see what I could come up with because at that point I knew that that method wasn't going to work. Um, and then eventually I took a scraper uh, and I just kind of moved it around and tried to uh, see if I could get it into a certain place. And then eventually I got it as thin as I could get it on top and figured I'll set it aside, I'll let it cure. Uh, and then once that's done, um, I'll go ahead and just, you know, scrape it off or, or sand it down and just see how that plays out. So the second sample I did, I tried to be a lot more kind of suave with it. And I just kind of dripped it very subtly into the cracks and tried to keep the mess as minimal as possible to see if it could level out. And I figured once this one cured, I could test it out against the first one. And maybe if it was just less of a mess, it would be less editing that I would have to do after the fact. I uh, just wanted to see if I could get that sample to work. So because I knew the pouring idea was probably not going to be the answer, I decided the next thing I wanted to do was press it into place. And so I went ahead and smoothed out kind of a bed of flex seal onto the bottom of the substrate. And then I pressed the tile into it, thinking that it would kind of squeeze itself out through the cracks and hope that it would kind of self-level. And it kind of worked a little bit. And I was thinking that that might end up being somehow the way to go if I could figure out how to, you know, develop a method to do it cleanly. Um, but I never really did. Uh, and it still kind of had just some like awkward, uneven squeeze out in the end. But, you know, so that particular night I was pretty much done, you know, so I decided to go ahead and just make my other kind of control samples. Uh, so I, I put a sample down and I installed regular sanded grout 
And then I also did LVT grout in another sample so that I could just test those and see where they ended up and find out if there was going to be any type of flexibility in there at all. And then at the end of that, I went ahead and let everything cure overnight. All right, so here are the potential candidates. This was my first attempt at the flex seal. So it's obviously a disaster. Uh, my second attempt is quite a bit prettier here. Not perfect, but definitely an improvement. Uh, then, of course, we have the other two types of grout. We have LVT grout here, and uh, then we got regular traditional grout. So I'm going to let these dry overnight, and then we'll uh, take a look tomorrow, see if they're uh, any better. I'm trying to get closer to the camera. Hi, here I am. Okay. So the next day I went out and found the samples and realized that they weren't really cured yet. A lot of them were still pretty tacky, um, especially around the edges. Um, I eventually figured out why that was, and I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out. Um, but it's because of tape. Anywhere where I had put tape, the Flex Seal did not cure behind it. Um, and then the other thing was I, that was when I got the idea that I could start scraping these tiles. And so I got out a razor blade and tried to scrape it down and it definitely got cleaner and better. Uh, but I, that wasn't the solution. So after giving it another day to cure, the edges still were wet because they still had tape on them and I just hadn't figured that out yet. So I went ahead and decided to hop into the flexibility test to see how flexible the different grouting methods would be. So the way I did this was pretty simple. Uh, I made sure all the substrates were the same size so that it was going to have the same angle, if you will. Um, I got a couple of washers to stick underneath. I ended up using three, and I don't know why I started there. I wish I would have started with one and added one at a time just to see where the breaking point was. But I started with three, um, and that ended up being a total of 0.17 inches. Uh, I put those right in the center of the one by one you know, substrate test you know, surface that I made. And then I clamped the two ends down uh, to make sure that there was a bow with the washers in the middle. And then I would see how many washers I could get in there uh, before it actually, you know, cracked the, the grout. So when I tested this, both of the control samples, the real grout and the LVT grout, both cracked very easily. Um, I was surprised that it was, you know, less than, it took less than a quarter of an inch worth of flex in the middle uh, to actually crack it. And so I thought, okay, that's not very good. Um, so, I, you know, I wanted to test the flex seal. Now I started the test on the flex seal and that's when I realized it still wasn't cured. And I thought, well, then I'm not going to have a real result because of course, wet flex seal isn't going to crack. But unbeknownst to me, most of the flex seal was actually cured and just the edges were not because that's what was exposed to the tape. Uh, it turns out that when I picked up this, you know, the flex seal and actually took it off of the back of the substrate, I could bend it, you know, very easily to 45 degrees without there being any sort of break at all. And then even when I push the limits, I mean, you're getting close to a 90 degree bend before you actually see that stuff actually break apart. Um, so the flexibility of the flex seal is incredibly um, more flexible, more elastic uh, than the other grout. And so to me, I didn't even bother continuing with the experiment. To me, it was clear that flex seal was the way to go. It was just a question now of figuring out how can I install this and actually be confident that it's going to look good. So the next thing I did is I went back to that press method where I lay down a bed of flex seal and then press the tile into it. I went back to that method thinking that's going to be the way to go. I thought if I could just even up the flex seal, that would be the way to go. So I got just a little uh, eighth of an inch, you know, V notch trowel. Uh, that way I could run it across and make everything close to the same height. So when I press it, there wouldn't be any, you know, type of... Uh, material coming up unevenly from underneath. And unfortunately, that idea didn't work. Um, it's just, as I said before, the viscosity is too much and getting the exact right amount is, would just be challenging. Uh, be going back and forth forever, um, trying to make it you know, smooth and even, and it, it just wasn't going to be the way to go. So then I started thinking and I thought, well, what if I use Flex Paste instead of Flex Seal? So I went ahead and bought a can of that and I laid that out evenly. And again, it was the same issue, only this stuff's even harder to work with because it's so much thicker. Uh, and I realized very quickly this wasn't going to be the answer to my problems. So then I came up with another clever idea. I thought, what if I get a syringe and I actually squirt this stuff into the cracks? That might be the best solution. So I ordered some syringes online uh, and I quickly learned that this solution wasn't going to work. So first of all, it was too thick to actually pull it into 
into the syringe very well. I'd pull the syringe back and just kind of wait forever for it to slowly fill the syringe or just keep kind of pumping it. Um, and by the time I got enough in there to actually squirt out, uh, it was very close to being too much coming out to fill that crack. So if I would have gotten a bigger syringe to make it flow into the syringe out of the can better, then it would have been too big to put into the grout line. If I would have put it any smaller to work in the grout line, it definitely wasn't ever going to suck any of that stuff into the syringe. So it was pretty obvious that that wasn't going to be the solution either. I suppose I could have taken the back of the syringe out and filled it up, but the control of it and the detailed work of it I, I just realized that that wasn't going to be the answer. Then I took the sample that I had scraped before and I thought, well, what if I get some acetone and I just kind of clean the tiles with acetone? So if I can just cover everything, scrape it off, and then wipe it with acetone, maybe that would be the solution. And the acetone get, did get some of it off, but the amount that I removed for the amount of work I put into it, I just knew that that wasn't going to be the right way to do it either. So then, as I was about to give up on ideas, I decided to try one more thing. I went ahead and I got some mineral spirits to see what would happen if I actually just wiped this while it was wet. Now to start this process, I laid out some masking tape on the bottom half of the sample and uh, got a razor knife and cut out the grout lines because I thought, eh, I'll give this a shot. Maybe if I can just get it thin enough and hazy enough after wiping it, I can peel that up. Uh, but after I tested the method, I realized that that was going to be unnecessary. Praise the Lord, there is a way to get flex seal into the tile and make it look good and keep the flexibility so that you will never have to worry about it flexing too much and breaking unless you have a severe flexing problem. So let me tell you now how I installed this in my camper. So the first thing I did was I cut a substrate because I felt like doing everything in my garage and then transferring it later would be the easiest way to go. Uh, so I just got some Luon cut it out to the shape that I needed and laid it out. And then I got the tile and I cut all the tile until it fit onto that pre-cut shape. So I knew that I would have the layout that I wanted. So once I had all the tiles cut and fit, and then I also adjusted the, some of the crooked tiles that come, you know, not straight on the preformed um, sheets that you can buy. I took all that off and then I took my eighth inch V notch trowel and spread a layer of flex seal pretty thin. Um, of course, the V-notches kind of control that um, across the entire substrate, making sure that it was completely even. And then I took each one of the tiles and I put them in place onto the substrate. Um, I didn't bother using tile spacers because I figured eyeballing it would be just fine, especially because these are preformed. I made sure everything got into position how I wanted it. And then I went ahead and let that cure uh, for a couple of days. So once the tile had been cured in place, I went ahead and I put some tape all around the edge of the tile there. And my thinking was that if I was going to put all of the flex seal into the grout lines, I didn't want it overflowing off the edge and getting thin towards the edges. Um, so you could probably get away with not doing that step, but I did it and it really wasn't too much of a hassle. So then the next thing was just simply applying the flex seal. I just got a very thin, very cheap, you know, spongy float from Ace Hardware and I just used that to apply it into all the grout lines and press it down and kind of keep it as you know low and flat and thin as possible as I spread it out. Now there's a little bit of trickiness to it in that there's some air bubbles that get in there and stuff like that but for the most part spreading it out was really you know very simple uh, and it really wasn't too much work just to pour it out of the can and spread it out. Now once I got it on there trying to move fairly quickly so it didn't yeah, I didn't have any curing issues but it really takes a long time to get to start curing so you have plenty of working time here but basically I just bought a bag of you know t-shirt rags so that they were white and clean um, and also my can of mineral spirits and I just started wiping things down now at first you kind of take off bigger bigger chunks of it and stuff like that but once you start getting down you have to be careful because every little wipe tends to want to pull some of the flex seal out of the grout and across your tile again so I recommend getting kind of the bulk off the top at first and allowing some areas to kind of stay spotted and then when you come back through kind of pick a corner and work your way across and be very delicate and gentle with it be willing to take your time that's the thing is it takes kind of a very soft, delicate touch because it doesn't take much pressure to start pulling that flex seal out of the grout lines. Now, as I mentioned before, there were some air bubbles that kind of got in there. And so as you're going, you may have to kind of drip some of the flex seal back into those holes and then go over it again. Or you can actually even kind of spread it out as you're moving your, your rags around and stuff like that. But really take your time 
and move it across and make sure you get all the spots off as you're going and be very delicate, especially when you get towards the final stages. For this particular project, which I think was about three feet by two feet, something like that, uh, it took me a good 45 minutes to get everything completely wiped off uh, to the spot, to the point where I felt like it was very clean. So after I let that dry for about six hours or so, I went ahead and took the tape off the edges uh, and everything looked really good to me. I was very happy with the way that everything came out. Now, looking at the timestamps of my videos, it seems like I went ahead and started installing this thing six hours after I did the grout step. But I don't think that's accurate. There must be something I'm not thinking of that messed up my timestamps. My memory says that I waited a couple of days before installing it, which is obviously what I would recommend. Make sure you give it enough time to cure so you don't accidentally start smudging something uh, that's still wet underneath or something like that. So whenever the day did finally come to where I installed this thing, basically what I did was I walked in and I covered the backside with silicone and the wall that I was attaching to with silicone. Uh, and the reason I did silicone is I felt like it was a good idea to have the adhesive that sticks this thing to also be flexible because flexibility is kind of, you know, the king of what I was trying to figure out. And so once it was up there, uh, I took a piece of wood and laid it across the tile. Um, I actually did this on the top and the bottom. I, didn't, I don't have video footage of all this, but you can at least see one of them. So I put a smaller piece of wood that goes just across the length of the tile, and then I got longer pieces of wood to go over top of that piece of wood so that when I clamped it through, uh, I don't remember if I clamped it out the window or clamped it to the bedpost and then, and then also on the edge of the door there. Um, when I clamped that stuff on there, the, the pressure could squeeze on the ends, but there was a little piece of wood that went uniformly across the tile itself on the top and on the bottom. And I went ahead and I let that cure overnight. So I came out the next day and I took off the clamps and took a look at it and I loved the way that things looked. Uh, after that, I just cut up some pieces of trim to match the rest of the trailer, uh, glued and pin nailed them in place. And then also I, you know, caulked around the edges so that uh, it ended up looking nice and clean and pretty. So now, when all is said and done, the real question for you is, does this actually work? And from everything that I can see, the answer to that question is, yes, it does. Um, my wife and I are really happy with it, not only with the way that things ended up looking in the end, um, but also just the, the way that it feels, the longevity of it, the fact that it doesn't seem like it's falling apart. Uh, we've gone camping on three major camping trips since we finished the camper um, in three different states. So thousands of miles we've put on the trailer. We've, we've taken it to weigh stations to weigh it a few times. Um, we took it out to take pictures. So it's been on the road quite a bit facing highways and speed bumps and braking and stopping and going and uh, wind and rain and all this stuff that's moved the trailer around. Uh, and we still can't see a difference at all in how um, the Flex Seal is actually holding up. It still looks brand new to this day. If you take a look at it, you'll see that it is still solid. There's not a single crack. There's no discoloration or anything like that. And that's even being near a cooking surface as well. And so it really seems like this is you know, a good long-term solution for flexible grout. So for me, looking at this and asking about the pros and the cons, I would say that the pros are actually pretty clear. Um, to me, this stuff is flexible, it's durable, and it looks great, right? And to me, those are the most important things I, I was looking for in putting this in the camper is I didn't want it to break and I wanted it to look good. Um, aside from that, there were a lot of other things that I really wasn't going to be too worried about, but I should still mention to you what the cons are, I think, of using this as grout. <sighs> Sorry, I just had to go talk to a contractor in the rain. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the cons of installing this um, are, first of all, real tile is still heavy, so using Flex Seal doesn't make it any lighter. So there's still the weight consideration. The other thing you have to think about is installation is a little bit more difficult. Peel and stick, you open the package, you pop it up there, right? And even doing real tile with regular grout is a little bit easier in my opinion, um, but it's not too much harder. Another con is that using Flex Seal, you have to choose between black or white. They don't have a variety of colors of grout. You know, you can't go get, you know, summer biscuit eve color, right? I mean, it's, it, it doesn't work like that. You have black or white. I would be curious to find out if you could add pigmentation to flex seal and make it colored. Um, it won't have that sandy effect, but I wonder, could you mix sand into the flex seal? Would that help? You know? So there are other things to test, but from what I know for sure right now, out of the can, your options are black or white and that's it.
And the last thing is that, of course, Flex Seal is not cheap. Uh, I just checked out some prices before I started making this video, and Flex Seal is $34.99, and you get 20 fluid ounces for that, which means you're going to pay about $1.75 per fluid ounce. Now, you can get pre-mixed grout from Home Depot for about $41 a gallon, which means it's about $0.32 cents per fluid ounce. Uh, so that would mean that Flex Seal is about five and a half times more expensive than pre-mixed grout in, in the gallon. Now, Prices may be different where you are, right? You might be able to find some cheaper premixed grout or more expensive, or maybe you don't want to use premixed grout. Uh, that would probably have an impact on the cost as well if you just mix your own. Um, you also have to consider that the way that I'm doing this, Flex Seal is used as thin set and grout. Uh, and so when you factor in getting thin set and grout, um, you have to get two products, but thin set is usually cheaper than grout. So, um, so it will be more expensive, but for me, you know, I spent 35 bucks and that was plenty. And really, if you're looking for something flexible, you're probably not going to be doing a big project. So that $35 is just probably something you would just have to eat. But it is a con that you have to consider. And for me, looking at the pros and the cons for what I needed it for, the pros definitely outweighed, you know, the negative part of spending a little bit more money, doing a little bit more work. Um, and hey, I guess when all said and done, I got a YouTube video out of it. So there you go. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful and I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, how things went. Sorry it's been a while since I've released a video, but hopefully coming up soon there will be plenty more videos um, about our trailer and then also moving on to some of the soundproofing stuff and things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're interested in being up to date on that, please uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. Uh, and with that, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.